The mystery and the miracle of the birth of Christ was the fulfillment of the promise that God would be with his people. The very name Emmanuel means God with us, and Jesus Christ is our Emmanuel. In this study, Scott Pauley reminds us of our ever-present Savior, God with us. I'm so excited because today we turn our attention back to the classic passage, the the real key verse to this entire study found in Matthew chapter number 1 of Emmanuel, God with us. The setting, of course, is that Joseph is bewildered because the Lord has sent him a message that Mary is going to have a child. She's a virgin, but she's going to have a baby. And uh, can you imagine being Joseph? Put yourself in his sandals. Wrap your mind around that. In Matthew chapter 1, verse number 23, this is exactly what the Lord says to Joseph. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. There it is, God with us. Now, returning our attention to the New Testament now in our study, to this point we've been in the Old Testament scriptures, but I would remind you uh, that all of this is connected that the God who came in Matthew is the God who uh, was at work all through the Old Testament. In fact, this exact verse, Matthew chapter 1, verse number 23, is a quote from the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this is a direct fulfillment of prophecy. And, of course, the spiritual uh, message of it is the message of the whole of Scripture, that God has come to us. God came. Let that sink in. God came. In Bethlehem, that was the great revelation. God came. On the day of your salvation, that was the key to you having a relationship with him. God came to you. You couldn't come to him. And every day, it's the great reassurance God is with us. God has come to us. In fact, uh, those two little words, God came, are found in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse number 2 says, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. This is really the message of the whole of Scripture. God came. In the Garden of Eden, man had sinned. They're hiding. They're they're making fig leaf aprons. And what happened? God came. In Noah's day, the imagination of man's heart, only evil continually. What happened? God came. At the Tower of Babel, remember they were going to build a tower all the way to heaven? And God said, let's go down and check this out. God came. To Abraham, God came. Uh, to the children of Israel under Egyptian bondage after all those years, what made the difference? God came. That tabernacle in the wilderness, what made it so special? God came to that tabernacle. Uh, Job sitting in misery with no answers from any man, what changed everything at the end of the book? God came. The Lord showed up. Uh, Three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace, and yet God came. Daniel in a den of lions, and God came. Nineveh headed headlong to destruction. And yet it wasn't that Jonah came to Nineveh that changed everything. God came to Nineveh. God changes everything when he shows up. Uh, Lost men are forever changed when God comes to them. 400 silent years, 400 years with no open revelation. What changed it all? In the words of Galatians, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Could I say it in two words? After 400 years, God came. What about after the cross? The Lord is dead. He's buried. And yet, God came again. And he appears to those disciples in power, in resurrection glory. Uh, In Acts chapter number 1, 120 of them were gathered in an upper room. Uh, What made all the difference? God came to that upper room. Do you see how this principle of the Lord coming to us is really the message of the whole of Scripture? And it's a message we need to do two things with. Number one, we need to give more 
attention to it ourselves in our own life, pondering it, praising God for it, meditating on it. God came to us. Think of that. Lost, fallen humanity, hell-deserving sinners, and God came. And then not only do we need to reacquaint ourselves with the depth of the spiritual truth, then there should be a breadth of us getting it out. Let's get this message to as many people as possible while we can. God has come. It's not just that God is going to come. God has come. In December of 1942, a 17-year-old Dutch girl by the name of Hansi Dobshiner came down with scarlet fever. It was a curse. Oh, yes, it was a death sentence for most, and yet for her, it was a great blessing. It was the means of her coming to know who God was. Her entire family, a Jewish family, were celebrating Hanukkah at the time, and they did what they had to do. They, they completely separated themselves from Hansi. She was locked in her bedroom for days on end by herself, totally cut off from family, friends, uh, completely quarantined. And it was during that time while the family was celebrating Hanukkah uh, that she picked up a copy of the Old Testament Scriptures and began to read them. Now think of this, 17 years old, and she came to the prophecy of Isaiah, Emmanuel, God with us. And it captured her. It just absolutely opened up to her. So much so, she would later say that she took out a piece of paper and something to write with, and she wrote those three words on a piece of paper, God with us, and she hung them over her bed. Soon after that, uh, the, the German army invaded and killed her entire family except for her. And because she had scarlet fever, uh, because there was a mark on her door, uh, they left her alone. They were scared to death of it. They didn't want to get it and spread it, so they left her alone. It was the means of her being spared. Uh, she recovered from her scarlet fever. Someone gave her a Dutch Bible, a complete Bible, Old and New Testament. And she started reading the New Testament, and suddenly the Holy Spirit made the connection for her that the Emmanuel promised in the Old Testament was the Emmanuel who came in the New Testament. God came in the person of Jesus Christ. And on an Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, interestingly enough, she called out to God and she confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. In her own words, she said she didn't know exactly what to say, how to speak to him, but she fell to her knees and she cried out, Master, Jesus Christ. And God saved her that day. She survived the Holocaust, and she became a powerful gospel witness, mightily used to point many people to faith in Christ. And do you know what it was that changed her whole life? One statement, God with us. Might I say, perhaps these words should capture us again. Perhaps we should be consumed again ourselves with the truth that God has come to us. Think of all the providential things in your life, all the twists and turns and the dealings of the Lord with you, His mercy and His grace. Think of the truth you've come to know. Think of the Word of God that you've been exposed to. By the grace of God, thank the Lord for that. And then determine to become one of those gospel witnesses yourself, to share this truth with someone else this week. This very week, Speak to someone and tell them about the God who came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ and the God who will come to live in them in the person of his Son through the Holy Spirit if they will simply trust him. Meditate on these two words today and pass them on. God came. During busy seasons of life, it is important to be consciously aware of God's presence. In all seasons and in all circumstances, God has promised you His presence. Emmanuel is not simply a name, it is a promise. Be sure to visit enjoyingthejourney.org and sign up to receive Scott's weekly newsletter, Helping Your Joy, delivered each Thursday to your inbox. Your joy will be helped with short devotionals, ministry updates, and Scott's upcoming itinerary. Simply click on the subscribe link in the top right-hand corner. From Scott and all of us here at Enjoying the Journey, thank you for allowing us to be an encouragement to you.